Wadia Movie Tone was the studio that was started by our grandfather, uh, Jamshed Wadia. He formalized the studio in 1933 and he actually made films all the way until the early 70s. Riel was born in 1967 and we were raised on a film set. So my father's parents, Jamshed and Hilla, were really like our spiritual parents. We were truly influenced by them in all sorts of ways. The love of uh, uh, reading, writing, even uh, performing. I was extremely lucky to have Hilla and Jamshed as my parents-in-law. They were genuinely interested in being with the kids and the kids loved them. So Riyadh, of course, was uh, always wanting to be like his grandfather. He wanted to be, uh, and yet he uh, loved his grandmother who was quite uh, glamorous and liked to do things with style, and he liked that. I used to love uh, putting on wigs, costumes uh, of all sorts. I mean, my father actually loved uh, photographing us. Uh, he used to love you know, photographing the entire family, and he would dress Riyadh up in these soldier outfits, once as an Arab, standing with a gun and with a headdress, and stuff that I would never really do, but uh, Riyadh loved doing it. Riyadh uh, was playful. In school he had uh, what they call attention uh, deficiency, so he was uh, always, uh, you know, not at, uh, concentrating on his studies, but he was very bright. He was extremely popular. Everyone uh, loved him in school. He then uh, became the school's uh, uh, head boy, I think, in the 10th standard. In school he was dynamic and uh, he liked to be involved in plays and uh, he was a bit of a joker also in class. And so he was a real showman, you know, he loved being in the uh, limelight. Um, we then joined St. Xavier's together, junior college together in 85. Uh, Riyadh was a little older but we were in the same batch and he was an absolute force of nature in, in, in junior college always up to tricks, always having fun, creating a lot of tamasha everywhere he went. We stayed really good friends and then he went off to film school in Australia. In a place called Wagga Wagga, right in the middle of um, um, Australia. And uh, he was given a scholarship to study over there and he was there for a couple of years. And uh, while he was there, he actually won uh, several student film awards and uh, was extremely uh, popular. My uh, mom actually had started her own ad agency, Interpub, which was a very well-known ad agency, small uh, boutique agency. And when he came back, he was so happy to be back and working with us. We gave him a place in Interpub, uh, independent place. And uh, we did some films with him. We did State Bank of India, we did BOI, we had uh, for the dam in uh, Gujarat. Uh, I wanted to study film and he told me uh, just take that money and travel and have lots of sex and do lots of drugs. Just travel the world and you'll become a filmmaker. And the best part is uh, I today realize that it's, it's the best lesson, I mean, then going to film school. My um, grandfather had a range of different influences from the highbrow to the um, action genre. So what happened was that they had made a couple of very popular films that were more mythological Arabian night fantasy films. And around that time, um, uh, Nadia, who was not known as uh, Nadia at that time, she was um, Mary Evans, arrived at the studio searching for a job. He was keen to make a film about a female Zorro-like figure. So he thought of this film called Hunter Rawali, which is uh, Lady of the Whip and he cast her in it. And uh, she was a huge hit. Uh, the film was made in 1935 and that uh, made her into this huge overnight star. And after that, she made all these Hunter Wally-like films for the next uh, several uh, decades. And that was what really made the studio famous in its early day. We had this amazing archive of the old films, especially the old fearless uh, 
uh, Nadia films. Ria said, why don't I make a documentary on her life because it was an absolutely amazing story of this uh, foreign uh, woman coming to this country, becoming one of the top um, stunt queens, actresses of that time, 30s, 40s, even part of the uh, 50s. And that's how the uh, documentary Fearless the Hunter Wally uh, story happened. And it was made in 1992-1993. Uh, uh, I'm member of the selection committee for the Berlin International Film Festival. And we are seeing hundreds and hundreds of films. Now suddenly this film comes in and Riyad had made this documentary in a style in which he is telling, in his very unique, very personal style, the story of her life, but very, very smartly uses sequences and clips. And this film, of course, we selected on the spot for Berlin. And my colleagues similarly reacted very, very strongly because this was something nobody had heard of, that this kind of movies were made in India. And uh, we were totally thrilled. It did extremely well on the film festival circuit uh, across the world. It was shown at all the top film festivals, London, Berlin, Paris, uh, Toronto. And it really put Riyadh on the uh, map as a young filmmaker to watch out for. There was, an, uh, there was a short article on him even in Time uh, magazine. One night after dinner, it was just uh, mum and me at the uh, dining table and I said to her, you know, mum, there's something I need to tell you about. And, you know, that uh, sort of uh, conversation was uh, building up that way. And she said, I know what you're going to tell me. You're going to tell me that you're gay. And I know, uh, um, you know, and it's no uh, big deal. And I said, so how do you know? She said, well, I've sort of always known about you. And, you know, um, Riyadh confirmed it. And I said, Riyadh confirmed it. He said, yes, when he told me about himself. And I was completely flabbergasted and I said, what do you mean he's gay? And so he had actually come out to mum and dad, but he sort of used me as a shield, you know, which I found was quite uh, funny and also a little bit uh, startling. I knew that Roy was gay and that Maria became gay, so two sons, both gay, and no grandson on the horizon, or grandchild, I, I should say. So it was a bit of a shock, but then, they were so wonderful about it and, uh, you know, so inclusive. Uh, Varya movie tone had a, certain, a particular role. He was from it, so people had some idea about what Riyadh is and his background is. And if he had come out, they would have said, if he can be out and nobody can throw stones at him, well, why can't we? Gay rights was not something new. Ashok Rao, Kavi and others after him had actually pioneered that way. But Ria took it to a different level in the sense he was part of the social set, he was part of the um, international crowd. He went to parties where he was very open about himself. He made no bones about who he was to anyone. In fact, the first thing you would know about him from his own mouth was that he was gay. He felt that you can't detach the personal from the political and, and that, you know, if you are gay, then that, that is something that you should wear proudly. And, and if we were not proud of ourselves or ashamed of ourselves, then how on earth were we ever going to come out of the closet? So, it's 1996 and Riyadh Wadi has offered me this outrageous um, role in this outrageous set of six films based on Raj Rao's poetry. It's always awkward to get naked. It's even more awkward to get naked on a film set. It's even more awkward to get naked on a tiny documentary, let's do this quickly kind of place at Wilson College. And it's even more awkward to get naked and then have to know that you're going to be into inverted commas, sodomized by some person and you're going to love it in the middle of a library, in the middle of a library, and then have somebody slap, literally, from a frying pan. They took off these two hot fried eggs and put them on my chest. He felt that something more had to be done with those poems than just, you know, record me reading them. When I saw that film for the first time, I said like, what is this? Because at that point of time in India, there was no concept of a short film. There was no concept of an indie independent film. That really left a lot of impact uh, because also what uh, Bombay showed was the fact that like, 
it showed both the uh, uh, I would say the upper middle class uh, 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 gay crowd and it also showed a very grassroots kind of gay crowd and also it placed these people in very real life situations you know whatever it did it was not just pioneering it was quite bold and aggressive even pushing the LGBT agenda so he's one of the first really in India to have brought it out and put it on the on the table which uh, was quite a shock you know there was just uh I mean, groundbreaking in a sense that the ground has not been broken after that. Nobody's trying to even look at poetry of that kind and try and take that into a sort of a cinematic fiction arena. Uh, it was, uh, it was, the imagination was bizarre. It's one thing to write, you know, and it's another thing to film. So he brilliantly carried that off. He brilliantly carried uh, off the uh, gay bashing scene in the underground uh, washroom at uh, BT station. Um, again, a very difficult thing to shoot, I'd say, but uh, I've never seen uh, a sequence like that ever being filmed, even in uh, foreign films. The milk shan't in head. And after that, one more short film, A uh, Mermaid Called Aida. Again, when I saw Aida's film, at that point of time, the idea of transgender, a person who's going to transition, was so not known. No. But again, it's important that Riyadh showed it, and I think over a point of time, when we keep thinking or looking at it, uh, we know that how important it is. But for me, uh, as a filmmaker, uh, what is the really critical thing what uh, Riyadh did was, he took this film around the world. Now for me, he was a darling of the film festivals, okay, his film showed it some of the big film festivals, whether it's LGBT, mainstream, and he, wherever he went, he was a darling. And even today, when I write and interact with many of the people, uh, uh, film festival directors or programmers, they remember Riyadh very fondly, even after so many years. And the fact that a small film like Bombay made such a huge impact, you know, or a, a, a films from India, gay films from India were, really would not be programmed at all, but he made it happen. It was in 96 that I remember that Riyadh one day looked at me and said that, you know, um, don't you think we should go for an HIV test? And When the phone call came from my mom, actually, I knew what she was going to say even before she said it. And, you know, that was that. I thought that he would do some... Uh, medical, uh, you know, uh, solution about it, but he resisted it, and he kept on telling me that there is no such thing. Fifty percent of those who take medication uh, live, and fifty percent don't. So where is the proof? And he resisted this. There was something in Riyadh that prevented him from taking a single pill. He never took medication for the entire eight years that he knew that he had HIV. And my parents and I found that very agonizing and very difficult to even talk to him about it and to convince him. And one part of me actually felt that, you know, his denial perhaps or his attitude was what was actually keeping him going and uh, keeping him strong. He had some sort of equity and justice in his mind that because the poorest in India were HIV positive, the hijras and all, then he didn't also have a right till they got something, you know. We also have to keep in mind the context. It was 96, the whole AIDS, HIV situation in India at that time was, it was early days. He was not even 30. Um, at that time, it was a death sentence. It's not what it is today. Um, I know that any other person would have probably just, you know, crumbled. Uh, but Riyadh took the opposite route. He emerged a few weeks later saying that he would rather go out singing and dancing and having a good time. And he, would, he wanted to move to New York. Um, and that's precisely what he did. The amazing thing is that the uh, US immigration, which is normally very tough on people who want to stay there and work there, gave him a work permit very easily because he was deemed to be one of those rare, exceptionally skilled artists, filmmakers. Very soon brought his Bombay self to various circles where everybody in New York knew Riyadh. It was quite amazing, like from, from in, in, in the South Asian community, in the gay community, 
uh, and in the filmmaking and theatre community. I remember going to Toronto for the first time and Ri and I actually went together. And that's when I realized that Ri actually was a, a young Ismail merchant, if you know what I mean. He was growing into this, into this he was still growing, but he was, he was becoming this person who was cultural ambassador or certainly cinema ambassador or ambassador for the arts. And then September 11th, 2001 happened. All the temporary work that he had in that um, city dried up. I think he was starting to feel that his own health was starting to decline and he just came back to India. He A started doing the whole uh, Wadia movie tone archiving, he did the poster exhibition, he was really very prolific with that whole thing and B he really became like a social animal and a man about town at all the parties, he really became one of the page three regulars. Of course you remember Riyadh for his legacy you know as a filmmaker, as a writer uh, and we'll remember him as a friend and as someone who's touched all our lives. But I think we should also remember him for his legacy as a fashionista. In the 90s, he articulated for an entire generation uh, what it means to be free, what it means to be your own self, uh, in the kind of personality he had, whether it was his loud booming laugh, whether it was the hello darling that he said when he entered a room, whether it was in the clothes he wore. He was a brilliant friend, he was a brilliant friend, caring, uh, very, very uh, understanding and a lot of my own coming to terms with my own identity and sexuality, I owe a lot to read. I think he was very influential at that time in the 90s in showing a lot of us that worked in the arts that work doesn't necessarily have to be commercial commissioned work. It can also be work that you yourself create, you yourself research and bring. He, uh, Bombay had a special um, memorial for him and I was there and they screened his films and you know people spoke about him and there was a guy who came up to me, a complete stranger and he was in tears and he said are you Riyadh's uh, 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 brother and I said yes I am. And he said, well, um, I just want you to know that Riyadh helped me with my HIV situation. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I'm HIV uh, positive. I've been taking uh, medication for years. Riyadh helped me to find the source of the uh, uh, drugs. He helped me with, you know, counselors and doctors. And he also helped me to come out to my own family and tell them that not only am I gay, but I'm actually HIV positive. And I found that the irony of ironies, because here was Riyadh, who wasn't really helping himself, but he was doing a lot of work to help several people who were um, HIV positive. Riyadh was born light and he was born with a light. And he, sh he shared that light, you know, with everyone. And I, for one, um, miss him like hell. Sometimes it's such a sad thing. And um, I think it was a, 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 a totally unnecessary death. I'm, I'm very sad to say that. I lost a good friend, he was younger to me. Ria used to tell me, even two or three years before he passed on, that, Mommy, I think I have said enough. I've done all that I wanted to do. I have said all that I need to say. And now I think it's time for me to go. I'm pleased to welcome filmmaker Riyad Wadia. His risque short film, Bomb Gay, caused quite a stir in his native India. If love cannot be fostered, if love is something that you can only keep in your heart, but you cannot express, then it is no love. And how, how tragic that is. To me, it is as tragic that two men or two women who love each other can, cannot express it. By coming out, by being gay, by being openly gay, by being finally able to be myself, what I have gained is far greater than what I would have lost out.